Can you hear me? Yep, hear you great. Okay, excellent. Uh, let me share screen. Uh, we can see the screen well, so um, okay. we'll just wait for you to maximize it. Yeah, that seems to work, so the floor is yours. Okay, okay great, thanks. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity. I'm Joe DeCarlos. I'm a professor at NC State University, and I wanted to talk about a new project we have to develop an open energy outlook for the United States. So this is a new three-year effort that's funded by the Sloan Foundation, and there's several key features uh, to this new project. One is that we really want to focus on technology and policy uh, pathways for deep decarbonization in the United States. So when I say deep decarbonization, we're really aiming to limit emissions to almost zero by mid-century. And to do this, we want to utilize uh, open source tools, models, and data. And beyond that, we want to maximize transparency. So it's not just enough to make things publicly available and, and open source. We also want to make them as understandable and, and usable as possible. Uh, we also want to try and push the boundaries of um, model sensitivity and uncertainty analysis and developing our insights. And another big objective is to really promote community involvement in the effort. So I just want to emphasize that a whole energy systems view is important, particularly in the context of deep decarbonization. So if we really are trying to reach somewhere approaching carbon neutrality by mid-century, this is obviously going to cut across all sectors. Um, of the economy. And so it's really important to, to use energy system models to take that whole systems view. Um, it's also important because there's several system-wide pathways, for example, power to X that we need to, to consider as part of that. Um, and when we model the energy system as a whole simultaneously, it allows us to explore these system-wide changes and interaction effects between technologies and sectors uh, endogenously. So to do the, the whole energy systems modeling, we're, we're going to be using Tools for Energy Model Optimization and Analysis, or TOMOA for short. And TOMOA is an open source energy system optimization model. So if you look at the diagram on the right-hand side here, we, we, these sort of models conceive of the energy system as a network diagram. In this case, the green boxes represent different technologies, and those technologies are connected together by the flow of energy commodities, which are represented by the, the blue circles. Each of the technologies within the network uh, have a set of techno-economic characteristics. So this would be things like capital cost, fixed and variable operations and maintenance costs, capacity factors, efficiencies, and emissions coefficients. Uh, it's an optimization model that's doing um, linear optimization and the objective is just to minimize the present costs of energy supply over the model time horizon. Uh, there's a whole set of constraints, but um, you know, at, the, at a high level, uh, we ensure that there's an energy balance both globally across the system that we're modeling as well as at the, at the process level. And it's performing capacity expansion. So we're looking at uh, several user-defined time periods out into the future, typically spanning um, multiple decades. Uh, and what we do is we have these user-defined time periods. Each time period is broken down. Um, is basically an aggregation of years. And the model is actually optimizing a representative year within that time period. And we're assuming all years in the time period are identical. That representative year is then broken down further into a set of user-defined time slices. So those time slices, they can be a combination of seasons and times of day, or you could all go all the way down to the hourly level. And that's a critical decision because, um, you know, supply and demand are being balanced at that time slice level. Uh, as far as the open energy outlook, we're still in the process very much in the early stages of developing this input data set. So the, the temporal resolution is still, um, we're, we're still figuring that out. So as far as TOMOA development goes, um, the reason that uh, our research program uh, developed it was we wanted to enable repeatable analysis by third parties. We want to make both the source code and the data open so that folks could replicate results that we publish. And we also wanted to focus on uncertainty quantification. Uh, in terms of the software layers, uh, involved in TOMOA. So the, the model itself, the source code and data are publicly available on GitHub. Uh, we use an open source software stack. The, really the only exception to that is we often use commercial solvers like Cplex to actually uh, perform the optimization. 
um, but it's Python based and uh, like many of the the open modders uh, here you know we're drawing on a really rich Python ecosystem which makes things much easier uh, we store data in a relational database system in, in SQLite uh, which I think it works really well for this particular application to do the uncertainty analysis, we utilize multi-core and compute cluster environments. And uh, we also have the capability to run the model on the cloud using a, a web-based interface. You've got uh, one minute, Joe. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, planned outcomes, uh, we're really trying to attract an array of, of different scholars who can help improve the model-based analysis. We want to improve the coverage of energy technologies and sectors and energy models. Um, again, we're making everything available on, on GitHub. And we're hoping that this can serve as a platform for others to use to perform various analyses. Uh, these are all the key links. We have a project website. Uh, there's also a model specific website, our GitHub and Zenodo repos, and then finally a link to um, Tomoa Cloud, which is our cloud-based version of the, the model. And then I wanted to end by actually throwing out some questions to the community. Um, we're using Sphinx right now to generate Tomoa documentation. Uh, so we have doc strings embedded in the code that we then Sphinx pulls out to generate the documentation. But we're trying to figure out how to better document the input data, which is likely to change more frequently. And we want it to be interactive so that it's easy for the community to provide feedback. So we're tentatively thinking about using Jupyter books to do that um, because it allows us to use uh, to nicely format things with markdown but also to dynamically generate database tables. So as we're updating the input database, the documentation updates automatically. And then perhaps people could use the GitHub issues tracker or pull requests in order to suggest changes to the data. Uh, and then we have other documents. So we have, for example, a roadmap document that we recently generated and we'd like to share that. We could do it via Google Docs or I could just put it in the GitHub repo as a, again, another markdown document. But I'm just curious for folks out there, are there are these good options? Are there, are there better ways to share information in a way that makes it easy for users, particularly non-modelers, to provide feedback? And I'll stop there. Okay, questions. We actually have um, two questions on the, on the chat window, uh, one without audio. So Yizin should ask his question, and then, uh, then we can add uh, what the comparison was osmosis is. Uh, this is Ishing here. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, it looks like uh, uh, your model looks kind of similar to uh, Enrio's Reads model. So Enrio's Reads model is a, is a pretty good model. Uh, they can do capacity expansion and consider uh, lots of other things, uh, lots of things you mentioned here. Can you describe what's the uh, main difference between uh, uh, Temoa and the uh, Enrio's uh, Reads model. And the, that's the first question. The second question is whether you considered the transmission network. Uh, okay, so the, the first part of the question, um, I wasn't, I'm not familiar. What, what's the name of the model that you were uh, mentioning? Uh, it's Enrio's uh, Reads model. Oh, re Reads. Okay, reads, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so reads uh, I know is is being expanded. Um, currently, it's I mean it, it's largely focused on on the electric sector. And what we're trying to do with this effort and and also with Tomoa is to look at the entire the entire energy system. So we want to model not only electricity, but we want to be able to model, uh, for example, the industrial sector, the transportation sector, in some detail, so that we can really capture trade offs uh, in a deep decarbonization uh, scenario. But conceptually, in terms of the kind of the, the, the model formulation, it's not, it's not incredibly different from, from reads. As far as the transmission network goes, um, we're still thinking about that. We had a workshop in early January and among folks on the electricity team, they mentioned um, modeling the transmission network is kind of a key issue. So that's something that we're, we don't have any answers yet, we're still working on. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, you want to uh, talk about the relationship with osmosis? Sure, yeah. So um, it is actually conceptually similar to osmosis. And, um, you know, I've been aware of osmosis for a long time and, um, and friends and colleagues with Mark Howells. Um, Tomoa was really a, a product of uh, my research program, and it was really aimed at those two objectives that I mentioned that we wanted to. Um, 
make everything open source. We've had everything on GitHub since 2011 and, um, and also this focus on uncertainty analysis. So where I, I think osmosis is a little bit more focused on um, ease, ease of use um, for people to get up and running very quickly. Um, while we try to do that as best we can with Tomoa, we've focused a lot on making it um, uh, suitable for the research questions that we want to ask and answer. And a lot of that has involved um, computational performance and the ability to do uncertainty analysis. Great. So I think in the interest of time, we'll uh, thank Joe.